So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sandra Phillips Rogers, and it gives me great pleasure to be here on behalf of the wonderful men and women of Toyota, several of which are here uh, this afternoon, and also to be the sponsor of this wonderful event. I know firsthand when Toyota was looking at potential cities for our new headquarters, that high quality schools in the area was one of our top priorities for our team members. Plano ISD is a cutting edge school district in the areas of STEAM and STEM, robotics and computer science. It also prides itself in the diverse population of its students and families. Now, diversity is something that we champion at Toyota as we employ a truly global workforce starting here in the great state of Texas and reaching around the world. We are proud of our partnership with Plano ISD, the contributions that we've made, and look forward to continuing to build and invest in that relationship as the next generation of Toyota employees may come from right here in Plano, our own backyard. So please enjoy a video snapshot highlighting the students and staff of Plano ISD. Do what hope fills you. Be the unexpected like me. Do the unexpected for the benefit of others. Live the unexpected for your own happiness. As we begin our State of the City Address, please turn your attention to the video screens for a look at why we love Plano and what makes us the city of excellence.
Please welcome to the stage Lisa Smith, Plano Chamber Board Chair and Community Relations Advisor with FedEx Office. Thank you all, what a great video. Well, you know, at FedEx, we connect people and possibilities. And FedEx office could not be more proud to call Plano its home and to be part of this incredible community. Today, I have the privilege to introduce our special guest and my friend, Mayor Harry LaRosselier. When the, when the mayor moved to Plano in 1994, he knew that Plano was special and quickly abandoned his three-year plan to head back east. Since that time, he's given back to this community in so many ways by serving on so many nonprofit boards and commissions. In fact, in 1996, he and I kindled our now 25-year friendship when we worked on Leadership Plano. Mayor LaRosselier served for six years as a council member. In 2013, he was elected as the 39th mayor of Plano the first African-American to serve in that position. He was re-elected in 2017 and will finish his final term in office in May of 2021. The first four years of his tenure, I served as his mayor pro tem and witnessed firsthand what the impact of that infectious smile, clarity of vision, and passion for the city can accomplish. Plano has become a major economic center of North Texas and as the mayor would say, the center of the universe. Of all he has accomplished, I am most proud to have served alongside Mayor LaRosselier to see his tireless commitment to ensure that Plano's most vulnerable, our children and our seniors, thrive here in Plano through the various initiatives he piloted. Mayor LaRosselier firmly believes as a premier city, Plano rightfully deserves a voice on the national stage. He's an active member of the bipartisan organization, the United States Conference of Mayors, and serves as chair of the prominent Transportation and Communications Committee. And whether he's meeting with a CEO of a Fortune 500 company trying to convince them to relocate to Plano, or visiting with third, grader, third graders at an elementary school to read them a book, he will bring the same level of enthusiasm and energy to tell Plano's story. The same energy I know he will share with you today. Please welcome our friend and our mayor, the Honorable Mayor Harry LaRosselier. Thank you. 25 years, huh? 25 years. She told me she was 14 when she was serving on the leadership planet. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for having me out here. It means a great deal to me that you invited me, my council, uh, our city staff to be part of your luncheon. And th so thank you to the chamber board for uh, inviting us here. For me to deliver the state of the city address, Plano 4.0, excellence through innovation. But before I go any further, I have some public service announcements. Uh, Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Riccadelli told me to say, Judge Piper Mc McCraw is here and with us today, and she was not recognized. So Judge, where are you? Let's recognize her. There you go. The mayor pro tem asked me not to mention that today is Judge Chris Hill's birthday, so I won't say it. I will not say that it's Judge Hill's birthday. I won't say it. Okay. Any, anything else, counsel? Uh, Casey wants you all to know on sa Saturday her son's playing football. Uh, what else? Anything else? We're good? Okay. All right. So while we're preparing for this, uh, for the state of this, I was thinking to myself, first of all, how do we get here? How do we get to this point? And we're calling it 4.0 Excellence and in Innovation, but maybe I want to, you need to, I want to share with you what the first 3.0 meant. You see, 1.0 was in the 1980s, Plano 1.0. We were about 80, 70 to 80,000 in population. We we're a bedroom community. Most people lived in Plano, but worked in Dallas. Next two decades, Plano 2.0, we were one of the fastest growing cities in America. Our population swelled from 70,000 to 250,000. And when I became, came in office in 2013, I say we were in the midst of Plano 3.0. And what is that? Well, we're our own city. We have our own identity. 
We compete on the global stage for any business, any family, or individual looking for a place to call home. We have an abundance of uh, recreational and educational opportunities for all to enjoy. We're a world-class city and we behave like one. And that's Plano 3.0. And it was based on the foundation that we, were, we knew what we, we were about and we stuck to our core values. So economic development was important because we believe in uh, the upward cycle of prosperity for all. We, we partners with a great school district and we have community partners like many of you in this room that helped us get there along the way. Now, as I was going through this, our staff was just pulling up stats and stats, and usually by state of the city time, I'm like the plan of rain man. I mean, I have numbers in my head you just can't even imagine. But there was one that stuck out, 7,365. That is how many jobs we created this last fiscal year in the city of Plano. So that's about, that's about two Toyotas, five FedEx offices, a couple of uh, two and a half Liberty Mutuals. I mean, it's a staggering number. But then when you think about it, the last 18 months, the last 18 months, we brought 9,000 jobs to Plano. So that is the equivalent of the city of Highland Park we've hired in the last 18 months in the city of Plano, just to give it a perspective. And over the last year, PISD continued to deliver excellence in education. And one of the most proud moments for me is the partnership with Paul Quinn College. Dr. Sorrell, I saw you. Dr. Sorrell, here you go. With, through, 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 the, through, the, through, the, through Paul Quinn College, a student can have four years of education, probably less than $10,000 of school debt, work at a city, work at a company in Plano, and do this all on the virtual campus known as the Plano Paul Quinn College. Uh, uh, Plano. And that is the perfect example, I want to say, of what happens when government, education, and business cross-sect. That is the ultimate vision for me, for the city of Plano, and we delivered that with the Paul Quinn College. You know, we're known as a business-friendly community, and that's great, but what really made me feel good last year was, uh, was we were recognized, we were recognized as one of the most caring cities in Texas. Because at the core, we deliver what I call the Plano Promise. So what is that? The Plano Promise says, if you live in the city of Plano, we will protect you. If you're, if you're a youth, we will educate you. And, and if you live in our community, we will look to nurture you. And so, we are one of the safest cities in America every year. Last year, no different. Our fire department has a class one ISO rating and a, an accreditation for both fire and EMS. Only two departments in the nation could claim that. The other one, by the way, we're six times their size. To give you a perspective. We're gonna spend over 100, close to $115 million, $115 million this year on our roads, sewers, intersections, in, in, intersections, sidewalks, medians, to make sure that mobility and beauty is still there. How many about think that's a good use of our taxpayer dollars? Give it a hand, right? Our schools will educate you. PISD graduates our kids at a staggering rate of 98%. 98%. 58% of uh, adults in Plano have a bachelor's degree or better because we have so many fine institutions, financial institutions like Collin College to provide a, um, a start and a finish to, to education. We nourish our city in so many ways. We nourish it educationally. In our libraries this past year, this past year, 1.5 million visitors, 4,100 programs with 80 community partners happened in Plano. Over half a million people over half a million people walk the 75 miles of park trails we have. And if you lived in Plano and you have a membership to one of our rec centers, you saw some renovation uh, in the Senior Center, the Liberty Rec Center. Um, we, have, we now have three dog parks in the city of Plano, right, three dog parks. And even gets better, we have two all ability parks. So no matter who you are in Plano, two, <laughs> give a hand, that's great. No matter who you are in Plano, you have the opportunity to experience the Plano, the Plano uh, experience of our, our parks and recs departments. This past year alone, 
culturally, we, we nourish our community. Over 2,300 people came to the Plano International Festival. And then talk about nourish, talk about nourish. We uh, collected this past year 190,000 pounds of peanut butter for, for our North Texas Food Bank. That's 95 tons. But let me talk to my Toyota friends here for a second. Where's my Toyota? Yeah, Toyota tip, yeah. That's 36 Tundras that you've built out in, uh, in San Antonio and 63 Priuses. Now, my crack staff told me when I got, before I got here, it's not Priuses anymore, it's Pri-I, right? So it's 63 Pri-Is. In one month of peanut butter, our city did that, okay? Second annual Family First Day, we had over 6,000 people event. That's an, uh, that is it, a 10. That is an event where we celebrate families by providing them information on health, jobs and services, and we did that co in collaboration with, again, our community partners, something, a theme you'll hear over and over again. Our summer internship program, 120 interns this past year. We're up to close to 600 since the program started. And, you know, every year, just stop here for a second, guys. Every year, uh, we get about 100, 120 kids come through, and the joke is, when I first became mayor, I had two kids. Now I have like about 600. And if you look at this, this was a very candid picture. This is Namia. She worked in the mayor's office, so she drew the, sh the short stick. She had to follow me around for eight weeks. That's Avia. Avia worked in the legal department. Uh, she gets up at five in the morning to run to practice for track before school starts. And that's me in the back looking like a adoring dad looking at my girls, because that's what I am, an adoring dad looking at those two girls. And so uh, what an incredible experience. They've given me back, I think, way more than I, I've given them. We, we've nourished our neighborhoods through the Great Update rebate. 95 projects completed where uh, our, we partner with our citizens in areas where the homes are maybe over 35 years old in a certain price range. I mean, think 300 and, what was it, 330, 300, un, un, under 350, 345. 344,962 to be exact. <laughs> but th 345, under 345,000 in value over 35 years age, we partner with those, those homeowners to give them incentives to rebuild their, their neighborhoods. And we had this past year 95 projects completed with a return of investment increased property value of seven and a half times, incredibly successful. But I, what I'm most proud of about certainly our citizens and our business community, that to them, it's not really only about writing a check. It's about giving time. And through our volunteer services, we've had strategic partners, partners and partnerships with companies that come out and do some wonderful things in our community. So as I think about Plano 4.0, excellence and innovation, it brings me back to when I first got elected. Uh, that was 2013. Phil Dyer there smiling because he's no longer the mayor. And I had no idea where I saw Phil. He still got that smile on his face, by the way. He knew what I was getting into. Uh, I got sworn in. And I was preparing for this, and uh, I saw this article that was written um, right before one of my, my first council meeting. First observation, a lot more dark hair on my head, right? Um, but the caption says, new mayor wants cities to stay the same. And he really captured my sentiments. I wanted Plano, at the end of my first term, to be the same city that it was when I came in 1994, same city that others came in earlier before me, because we were true to the values that mattered. We we're gonna evolve, we we're gonna look different, we we're gonna have a different feel to us, but we're still the same city. Sense of safety, families and friends were important. Education and a, a true bonded sense of community. Those are still there, and I'm proud of that. And although mayors and councils come and go, in Plano, we're bound by a shared vision, uh, the vision that our council set forth in a recent work session. We will be the global economic leader bonded by a sense of community where residents experience an unparalleled quality of life. This vision is our guide. And what does it mean to you? If you live in Plano or, or do business in Plano, what does it mean to you? First and foremost, recently, uh, we get these awards all the time, and I, I do my best not to, not to take them for granted and just say, oh, it's something else. But this one was the first time I saw 
saw this report, uh, award or this ranking. Plano was rated the fifth best fiscally sound city in America. In America. And that's because, that's because of our accredited libraries, police, fire, uh, public um, uh, uh, utilities, all of the departments, inspections, all of them together make it work. You see, we will look to create a city that not, we don't only live in, but we also thrive. So Plano 4.0 is here. It's the area of excellence and innovation. So what does the Plano promise mean to you? To you? Remember, protect you, educate you, and nourish you. Well, it's going to mean smarter things. You've heard the term smart city. Smarter things will be happening. Over the next two decades, there will be self-driving cars going around in Plano. We have to prepare for that from an infrastructure standpoint to be able to support that. That happens today. There'll be electric vehicles. There'll be stations. By the way, I heard Hummer is coming out with an electric vehicle in 2022. So you might see that in the, in the roads of Plano 4.0. You'll see what's known as smart light poles, where on one light pole you might have a charging station for your phone. You might be able to look up parking spots for the location where you're going to have dinner. Uh, maybe do a reservation at a restaurant down the road. Or, or if there's an emergency, it might actually be an emergency command center for our first responders. Those are going to be commonplace in Plano 4.0. And we're going to do this in a smart way. We're going to do this as we are... Uh, building and reconstructing our roads. Now, I don't think there's much construction going on in Plano because I hadn't noticed any in my community. Anybody, any y'all, any y'all seen that? Maybe you're not taking the same routes I take. But don't complain, you just said that 115 million was okay to spend it on infrastructure, so I got y'all on that one. Um, but while we're replacing and repairing our infrastructure, we will hardwire our city to be able to, to have the capacity for what was, is coming down the road. But really, opportunities are where technology can simplify your lives, and we, I want to make sure you know this. The last thing we're going to do is chase the shiny, bright object. We're not going to be the first one to get something that's cutting edge, but we're going to do things that are, are real, tangible, and provide return of assets for our clients. And the era of innovation is already here. In 2019, Plano was named one of the top five digital cities in America. And that's because we're doing some of those things already. Our police officers essentially have mobile offices. So the public safety officers have broadband, new laptop docks in their vehicles so they can spend more time being on the ground protecting you. They have license plate readers on their cars. We use drones for thermal imaging and uh, damage assessment so that, again, our first responders can be out of harm's way and protect you even better. And by the end of this year, when you use your cell phone for a 911 call, you can have your information already registered so that at the point of crisis, you're not giving the, the vital information that's needed to deliver the services. And how, how many here, people here are pet owners? Raise your hands. All right, Sean, I was right, about 50%. I, she said 70%, I said 50. Uh, Imagine if you lost your dog and there was a software that would allow, with a facial recognition that would allow you to find that. That's happening in Plano now. We had two recoveries this past year. One of the partnerships I'm most proud of is our mobility partner, Dart. This past year, we saw a service that we started a year or two ago called GoLink completely uh, grow to a level that we really weren't expecting. And what GoLink is, is a shuttle service for short trips. Right now, it's designated to a couple of areas in Plano because we're just, it's just getting started on it and hope to see it grow. Last year, over 8,000 more uh, riders um, enjoyed a short trip where they did not have to get into their car. And with our partnership with UberX, that cost of that trip is anywhere from $1 to $3. And that's a way to keep you off the road, allow you to have more time to yourself and still get your, your things done. Now. What's going on going forward? What are the biggest projects we can expect in the next decade or two? Signature project of the next decade will be the expansion of and development of our downtown Plano into one of the greatest downtowns in America. And I say that because Collin Creek will be the catalyst for this to happen. So let's say it's 2030 and you live 
in the Collin Creek Project location. You're going to be nestled among 3,100 housing units. It might be single-family home, multifamily, independent senior living, townhomes, uh, uh, little patio homes. You're going to have a variety of choices. You're going to get to enjoy eight acres of parkland, a mile and a half of walking trails, so you might get up one morning and decide to, to play chess in the park or, or take a jog on the trails. You might actually work there because there's going to be about 1.5 million square feet of office space. Uh, put it into context, that's about four towers, these four, four of these towers you see here in, in Granite Park. That's the equivalent of office space that will be there in Collin Creek Mall, Collin Creek, uh, the Collin Creek location. We're going to have a hotel with a rooftop bar and event space, eight to ten restaurants. Maybe there'll be a, uh, an autonomous bus looping around that you know every five minutes it's going to be at this location to take you to work or or to uh, your place of choice. Maybe the Gold Link will, have a, will be one of the expanded areas again where you can get sh short tr shuttle uh, services for quick trips. Maybe you have a business in Plano and you have one of your business partners flying in from somewhere else. They will be in DFW to downtown Plano on the Silver Line without having to make any, ch any changes. That's coming in 2022. And from there, maybe one of those light poles, again, you have the, you have the chance to, to book your, fl uh, your flight, uh, your reservation for dinner, or order a car or, 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 or e-bike, whatever it is that is your mode of transportation, those are all going to be available. And that's what it's going to look like. That's what the downtown will look like. And maybe on the way home, you were having such a good time in Plano, you just were running late to the airport. You could take Uber Elevate, which will get you from downtown Plano to DFW in probably under 12 minutes. All that is going to happen over the next couple decades in Plano 4.0. And Collin Creek will be the catalyst for this. This is what I see as the new boundaries for the greatest downtown in America. Collin Creek will be that, that, uh, that catalyst to make it happen. But make no doubt about it. Downtown Plano will still have its same funky character. The sense of uh, historic preservation will be there. Uh, we've already approved 4,000 housing units in the downtown, which will probably bring six to maybe 7,000 people living in downtown over the next several years. And that will bring more retail, quality services, and amenities to provide to them as well. That downtown will be the catalyst for the entire 75 quarter. I call that the new frontier, and it's just really a play on words. That's where it all started for us, and that's where it's going to be, it's going to happen over the next decade and beyond. That, that quarter from downtown will go into uh, further north to Envision Oak, Oak Point, and that's known as the Opportunity Zone. Legislation has passed um, uh, rules that will encourage tax advantage investing, and we have a great ecosystem there that's just waiting for, the, for the, the right investors to continue to build one of the most unique areas in Plano. We have a college there, we got Collin College there, we have the event center, a hotel coming, we have uh, Oak Point Nature Preserve, uh, it's a massive uh, park uh, about the size of Central Park in New York. Uh, and we're going to have different things like housing, opportunities, dining, and shopping to continue the opportunity for people to enjoy the Plano experience. But we can't do it alone. We need to do it with you as a community, and that's why we, we want to make sure we communi communicate to you on that. Because often, we overestimate what we can do in the short term, but we really underestimate what we could do over the long term. And the decisions we make today, decisions we make today, will impact our children and our grandchildren. You know, I can remember things I voted on 10, 15 years ago coming to fruition. The other day I was at uh, City Hall, and it was about 9 o'clock, and I needed an extra shot of, of caffeine. So I walk outside, and I decide I'm going to get a cup of coffee. And then it dawned on me, I had three places I could go get coffee in downtown Plano. You can imagine that. I had three options. I could have gone to Starbucks. Yes, there's a Starbucks in downtown Plano. I could have gone to 1418 or I could have gone to EXO. So I decided to go to EXO that day. And 
I walk in there, two young folks behind the counter, they're college students. I had uh, two or three people with their laptops in their virtual office. We had one person that was there that was having a meeting with me later who was frantically getting ready because he heard I could be tough sometimes. Uh, we had a couple, a retired couple, and they looked like a retired couple sitting and having, having breakfast, and that's our downtown. And I can remember 10, 15 years ago, nothing like that existed. And so in order, we have to be intentional and we have to decide what we want our city to be, and we go, at, go ahead and do it. I also saw, remember this real brash uh, uh, candidate that had a lot more black hair than me in 2013 say, as mayor, there's not a company in the world we won't compete for if it'll bring value to our, our city. And since that time, through the Economic Development Fund, we've seen 32,000 jobs come to in, in Plano. Not because I'm mayor, because we're the city of who we are, and we just need to let everybody know. And it's about our intentionality. We decided we were going to be the economic driver of Collin County in North Texas, and, and, and we're here. It's great to be intentional, but sometimes things happen organically. One of the things I'm most happy about is the organic growth of what I call the innovation hub or corner. And George Bush and, um, and Coit, we have two of the most innovative, progressive, impactful nonprofits in America, North Texas Food Bank and My Possibilities, and they're right here in Plano. And that's, that's what happens when you make decisions, and zoning decisions, and decisions for your future. So, like I said, we need your help. I need your help on what we're going to do next. So everybody pull out your phones. Let's go. Interactive time. Pull up your phones. Come on. Representative, I saw you texting while I was, while I was talking, so your phone was already out. Don't try to act like you're pulling it out of your pocket, man. I saw you. I saw you. He's, he's tweeting. Mayor, Mayor's blowing up the, blowing the, the state of the city right now. Okay. All right. Tell us what you want us to mo focus most on. Transportation, public safety, education, or green infrastructure? Where's my Jeopardy music? Nobody wants public safety? I can't imagine. There we go. That's Chief Russian. We want to make sure our new police chief shows up, right? We want to make it seem like we care about public safety. All right. Wow. I knew it was going to be close. I'll tell you what. Mark and Council, why don't we work on all of that rather than just one? Our work, uh, we have our work ahead of us. We have our marching orders, and these are our priorities. We know that, and we will, make, we will deliver that to you in an innovative way. So, in closing, you may want to ask yourself, who will we be in Plano 4.0? Who will we be? Same city we were when I was elected in 2013. Same city we were in 2000. 1990 and 1980. The core values of who we are sticks. We will keep our city safe. You will be in a city where you not only live, but you thrive. And no matter where you live in Plano, you will be welcomed. No matter where you are in Plano, you will feel safe. Thank you. No matter where you look, You'll see residential and commercial and economic vitality abound. We will, we will work on every part of our city. No matter where you live, work, or play, you're going to benefit from an accountable and innovative city government. Regardless of who you are, what part of the city you live in, race, color, or creed, you will receive the best education that, that can be provided. And no matter how you travel, you'll be a city that chooses we choose to be a leader in mobility solutions. Our foundation is, found, is firmly in place, and our values will be our guide. It's 2020, folks. Plano 4.0 is here. And join me with love for our community, belief in the promise of our youth, a passion, an absolute passion to grow our economic prosperity for all, and bursting with Plano pride Welcome to the area of Plano 4.0, excellence through innovation. Thank you. Thank you.
go, they can gather, um, really helps to connect the community. Mm -hmm. It promotes a lot of pro-social behavior. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a great added benefit to the community and that sense of connection and safety and all of that. Mm -hmm.